if you take a step back and say, um, if you go back a couple of years now to when we were recruiting for this study, and I was an investigator for the trial um, and, and enrolled a number of patients, we had an overwhelming, an overwhelming response to this study, um, reflecting, uh, I think, need in the community because, I mean, the people were coming, we had no trouble enrolling. We had lots of people coming forth and they were, they were miserable. They actually were miserable with their seborrheic dermatitis. So we don't normally think of subderm as, as being, you know, hurting people or being that bad of a disease or, um, you know, we think of it, I think, as relatively minor. But my experience in the folks that came forward were suffering and, and they were needy. And, and there was an overwhelming response of participants coming forward and enrolling in the study. I think, again, reflecting the need in the community and the level of need. So, um, and, then, and then we had a trial where the drug works so great and, you know, 80% response rate of clear, almost clear, and a high response rate in the placebo group, 50% uh, response rates, which I think reflects the quality of the vehicle. So the vehicle, the foam vehicle was, was w very well liked by everyone in the trial, whether they're on placebo or drug. And, and I think reflects that placebo rate. It doesn't mean the drug doesn't work great. It means that uh, to me, that means the vehicle was great. So the vehicle response rate showed for me that patients really love the foam. Um, high, high response rate. I called it the happy trial. <laughs> I, uh, and I told our cutest when I was doing it, I said, this is the happy trial because everybody in the study is happy. It's like, um, you know, I don't know who's on what, and it was completely blinded, right? So we didn't know who was on drug and who, who wasn't, but everybody seemed to be happy to be doing it. And um, just kind of, uh, that it was being done in the first place. So I, I, I give Arcutus a lot of props for uh, studying it and seborrheic dermatitis. I mean, we, we, just, it, we just haven't seen studies in that, in that disease. We haven't seen drugs in that disease. And so I, big props for actually doing it and having a product that works so great. So seborrheic dermatitis is either on the face or in the scalp predominantly. Those are the two main areas for it. And, and topical products for the face and topical products for the scalp have historically been challenging. And having a well-accepted, easily to use topical product for any disease for the face and for the scalp is a big thing. And um, foam formulations, uh, you know, just topical steroids, let's take topical steroids. Topical steroids are not great to use on the face. Um, you can, it can cause thinning of the skin, um, kind of dependence of the topical steroid. Um, the, the face is often, you can see steroid dependence developing where people have been using steroids on the face for a while. They can't get off it. If they try to get off it, there's a flare and the and the rash in the face. So in general, so topical steroids in the face are problematic. Um, and then scalp in general, with any other form, I mean, with gels, creams, ointments for sure. Shampoos are challenging. They don't stay on the skin very long. Um, foam is a great vehicle option for the scalp. And uh, so you, it goes on, it stays on there. It's not dripping down like a solution. And then it dissolves right on site. So um, as opposed to a liquid trying to apply, it's going to start dripping right away. So the foam kind of stays in place and dissolves in place um, compared to a solution. And of course, stays much longer compared to a, sh a medicated shampoo. So we see medicated shampoos for subderm we see solutions for subderm. So in this case, the foam is, I think, superior to both solutions and shampoos.
I think number one, the complete clearance rate, which is 51%, where we have zero septerm, zero anywhere in over half of the patients or about half of the patients is a is a big deal, um, completely clear. And then um, the other sort of big secondary endpoint to me is the tolerability, safety and tolerability, right? It's basically 100% safe and 100% tolerable in my experience. So in the, the numbers reflect, you know, close to that. So it's, uh, and that's a big thing for dermatologists, right? Is, is wanting something that um, basically no issues with it as, as far as a, um, in terms of tolerability or safety.